It's not a week in the NBA 2K community unless everything begins falling apart at the seams. And ladies and gentlemen, between the groundbreaking NBA 2K21 gameplay news Mike Wang just dropped, Chalk, NBA 2K League Pro being accused of using a modded controller in wagers versus content creators, to the UI that just dropped for both the new PlayStation and the new Xbox, there is some juicy goodness going on here today in this video. I'm gonna break it all down. Fellas, if y'all new, we on the way to two mil, man. Subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping to hit it before the end of the year. Is it possible? Most likely not. But we gonna grind, we gonna get there, fellas. Yeah! Hey, let's not wait. Actually, let's wait one more time. Drop a like on the video. Now, let's not wait, let's get into it. Hey, so Ronnie2k did mention last week that there's gonna be three blog posts detailing new gameplay improvements made to the next gen version of the game. Now, the first one just had me feeling like, huh, it's pretty cool. But this one, for a person who does this, gets me excited. So when, when I was talking to Mike Wang in that 2K TV episode like a few months ago, and Mike Wang was like gas, but there was stuff he obviously couldn't say because it was next gen. Mike Wang is working on next gen, not current gen. So he wasn't saying none of those things to me, but I could see the excitement in his face and I could see why. Oh man, all right, let's break it down. Uh, 2K released their blog post. Uh, they finally started doing it on their own website. They used to do it on like Facebook. Sometimes they would let like Forbes release the article, but I'm happy they're just doing it on their website. It's an easy place to find. Find it. Let me just simplify everything for you because for some reason 2K believes the best way to deliver news in 2020 is through text. They spent a lot of this article kind of giving you like a decent amount of fluff like guys the next gen systems are allowing us to do so much. So we can skip all of that. We know that. It's interesting because I remember they said that the dribbling system is gonna be similar from current gen to next gen. And I'm not gonna lie, if I'm a dribbler, that's pretty depressing news. Practice on your dribbling skills because it's gonna be similar systems in next gen. But then here in this article, they say something a little different. They say, we retain the concept of signature dribble styles that we introduced a couple years ago, but otherwise everything was scrapped and re-architected, bringing a completely different feel with the ball in your hands. But they do mention here that they will be using the same engine for the pro stick. So all those fantastic dribble moves the tryhards be doing, it will be the same system. I think 2K has been making a push uh, with this current gen 2K21 and with the next gen version of 2K21, where you have they want to give us full control Control, which in my opinion is dope from like do you want to do a bank shot or do you want to do a floater do you want to do a reverse layup or do you want to attack from this side of the rim all of that do you want to do a high arc on your shot or an like a line drive in my opinion that's dope they illustrate that a little bit further they say they don't want you turning around or facing the wrong direction by accident due to just an error in gameplay sometimes that stuff is cool like there's momentum spin around behind the back loop-de-loop -loop, dribble moves that dribblers do in my opinion i'm not opposed to it but there was plenty of videos where like you don't do a move and your player just moves in a direction you ain't asked him to do uh so 2k is just saying for the dribbling that you will go where you drop your input this year which in my opinion probably can be very refreshing uh, throughout this article they dropped uh just videos so we're gonna click on the videos so you get a sense of what they're talking about uh this one here is in reference to changes they made to defense and off ball and as you can see here tobias harris was being clamped up <laughs> They talked a lot in this article about improvements they made to their motion engine. Here they say improved pathing, cuts, and stops make defenders feel more grounded and fix a lot of the sliding issues from previous generations. And I struggle to believe it, but they also said for like the 15th time, by the way, bigs feel like bigs and guards feel like guards. But we've heard that in like 15 and 16 and then probably again in 18. So this, that part right there, I don't believe. I'm hoping that they're, hopefully with next gen systems, it will feel like that, but I don't believe it right now. I am excited about the changes they made to the motion system. And the most exciting one, in my opinion, is this one right here. And there's a video of the foot planting. If you pay attention to his feet, he stops on the dime. Because 2K is a game that feels so unresponsive and like the animations take forever to start and then you don't even go some place. You want to pull up for three, but your guy stepped in for a long two. A lot of the times, like you won't be going where you want to go on the game, even when you put in the proper inputs. They're looking to solve that with a lot of the adjustments they made to the gameplay. And this gets me excited. Just doing a full stop like that gets me excited. But all of these gameplay improvements, I'm telling you 2K is going to be for nothing if the game is played on 300 millisecond ping. Because no matter how we're responsive and fun you make the animations if the server is this cheeks when we play online we won't be able to experience that unless we just delete the internet and we play offline my career and this stuff gets me so excited man 
Players can now take procedural steps instead of sliding their feet when they need to make micro adjustments. When you need to just take an inch back so you can take the corner three, you won't fly out of bounds, man. Cause what usually happens is you either go nowhere and the input just didn't register or you just go way too far because there was no way to make those small adjustments. I'm hoping right now, this means that when I'm at the 22 feet away, right before the three point line, I don't have to just assume that 2K is gonna slide me back. Cause that was 2K solution in previous years. Oh, our foot planting technology is just not there right now. So we're just gonna slide you back to the three point line. It happened a lot more in the 2K 13, 14 days, but it still happens now in current gen 2K 21. Now the part that gets me a little bit worried is the contact animations. And that's all across the game, like one-on-one -on -one with your defender when you're bumping him, when you're attacking the rim, anytime a defender touches you. Because 2K has the potential to do like some game developers do this, especially in the sports world, where they're like, oh, it's gonna look so cool if it looks realistic. And then boom, now we got a million canned animations just so the game looks realistic. So even if you didn't wanna be in a situation, if it looked cool, you being dunked on, you're gonna get a drag canned animation. 2K13 was infamous for this. It was part of the reason why it's one of the worst 2Ks of all time, in my opinion. And 2K straight away from that. So I'm hoping they don't make a return to that in the name of realism. And based on the way Mike Wang was speaking here in this article it seems he's aware of that problem and they actively made sure that they didn't fall into that trap he mentioned here i think the next gen version of the game uh strikes a great balance between rewarding the proper angles on drives and respecting contact and that's that's why i know mike wan be listening bro because he said it him i didn't even i didn't even know he used the exact word to that end it meant less canned interactions and doing a better job of respecting user control. Oh, I love to hear it. Anytime I hear less canned animations, my shit gets hard. Cause as a gamer, that's like your dream, the less the better. And every once in a while, contact dunk cool because you put yourself in that situation, get, get dunked on then. That's fun, that's exciting. But when you get dragged uh, in, like from half court because Giannis wanted to dunk on you, now we're talking about problems. We don't want to go back to 2K13. They dropped a video here explaining those contact animations. And uh, yeah, so basically if you don't have strength and you're running straight into a defender, you're going to experience animations like this where you just get bumped. All of this contact looks natural. And Bradley Beal with the hand check right here on Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving able to push off. That's, that's hard. That's hard. Man, how I get, I got excited by seven seconds of gameplay. All of this gets me excited. I hope they're not capping about that. Please, no canned animations. We need less of those. Then they went on talking about off ball contact. So, <clears throat> juke, boom. This is my shit, by the way. So this will get, will get me excited because I'm a sharpshooter in my heart and my hearts, fellas. Uh, he mentioned, gone are the vacuum screens that have plagued basketball games in the past where defenders would get pulled into a screen collision and then run a direction they weren't asking for. Do you, do you see why I get ex I'm get i getting excited by this article? Do you see the word, like the word, he's getting me excited in many different ways right now, Mike Wang. They give us an example here of what they're talking about. That's gonna be such a relief. I'm not getting sucked into a screen just cause somebody has Hall of Fame brick wall. Screens should be effective. But if I dodge the screen or if I have Hall of Fame pick dodger, all of that should matter. I don't wanna feel like I'm being sucked into animations. 2K17 was the worst with that. Oh my, you couldn't even be in the vicinity of a screen without you being sucked right into it. And then you'd be on the floor because brick wall was OP that year as well. Uh, but then they got to talking about probably the biggest change they made to the gameplay, at least in reference here in this blog. They say, in NBA 2K21 Next Gen, we developed a new in-air contact shot contest system that we're calling the Impact Engine. The Impact Engine and Next Gen console power gives us the flexibility to do just that, creating reliable contact when players are in flight. So they just talk about how when you're driving to the paint and there is a defender in the way, the contact is not only gonna look a lot more realistic, but it's gonna respect inputs a lot more. So it's not gonna force you into an animation just because that was the only animation they had. And that sounds like a relief too. They give this video here of Donovan Mitchell uh, doing a little hop step and then getting swatted. He does a hop step, which by the way, in NBA 2K19 wasn't, no, I think it was 20, 2K20 was incredibly overpowered because they didn't have a system back in 2K20. Now they had a system. Look, they're trying to play defense. Donovan Mitchell is stubborn enough to go up. Good initial contact. All the contact right here with the main defender is dope. But now I think that's Brooke Lopez getting involved, looking for the block. And he's in there with all of, that does, that's not exciting. 
Oh my god! That's dope. I I'm excited to see how this impact engine plays out. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't stray too far into the world of realism that it just becomes unfun or very, very repetitive. The way 2K usually works is like if they come up with a gameplay idea, they'll develop it for like two to three years and then they'll drop it in the 2K that it makes sense. So if they start developing some idea, like we wanna work on foot planting and they start that in 2014, it might not be in the game until 2K16. Cause you can't just come up with good gameplay ideas. You can't just complete entire engines over the course of a year. Those take years to develop. So I don't know when they started this system, but I'm telling you right now, we were desperately in need of something like that. Plus a lot of people right now are complaining about uh, just the paint and defense in general in NBA 2K21 current gen. So I'm hoping a lot of those situations will be solved. They dropped some videos here just to show off their new engine. And here's an alley-oop contact dunk, by the way, with Dwight Howard. Both players fall on the floor. That's dope. Damian Lillard just running right through Chris Paul. And you can see the new foot planting, by the way. Back in the day, 2K15, 2K14, 2K16, uh, there was, I, some of y'all might be new to the community. There was some shit called Charge Cheese. And it would be where people like me, who for some reason just play way too toxic, just set screens at half court, just waiting for you to run into them. And because the game did such a horrible job at respecting inputs, you would be, you'd be accidentally, you, your momentum would just force you to run into me all the time. And I would know how to use your momentum against you, so I get like six, seven charges a game. It was very overpowered. And I do it at like half court. Like while you're bringing the ball up, I'll get a charge. Uh, they realized that that was incredibly overpowered and instead of fixing the system in and of itself like they're doing now, the, the solution they came up with was just to nerf charges. So now even when somebody bumps into you, like it's just the animation, you just graze back past him. They don't call it charges anymore. So uh, it seems like they're actually gonna be using a charge system this year because <laughs> they fixed the problem that made that system incredibly overpowered. So that gets me excited. And they kind of end the article off here talking about uh, a PS5 specific change that they call like haptic trigger effect. Basically, uh, let's say you're about to hit a screen. If you graze the screen lightly, your controller will actually vibrate a little bit. If you hit the screen hard, your controller will vibrate a lot. So you can tell based on your controller just how tired your player is, how much contact your player is in, and so they're giving you inputs just through the vibration of the controller. I have a feeling that that's gonna get very annoying over the course of the year, but I'm hoping it's more useful than it is annoying so I could keep it on. Because in previous years, I just turn off vibration. Vibration was cool when I had a PS3 and I was playing Metal Gear Solid 4 and it was new. But past that, I was like, yeah, I don't want my controller to vibrate when there's three seconds left in the shot clock. Personally, I know what time is on the shot clock. I don't have to be told. But as they say here, they want to immerse you in the experience of actually being on the basketball court. If you guys remember, I believe the game was 2K14. If you had your PlayStation Eye or your Kinect connected to your console and you said a swear word, the referee would give a technical in game over it because they wanted to immerse you in the experience. So anytime they say something like immerse you in the experience, I get a little bit, I don't know about that one now. I'm gonna wait to see, hopefully it pans out, but there's a chance that this just ends up being an annoying system. I hope not. Now they said this is PlayStation specific, uh, so this doesn't seem like something that's even available on the Xbox if you'd want it. And the example they gave here was Patrick Beverly hitting a hard uh, Steven Adams screen so your controller will probably go crazy once you hit this screen and as i mentioned here it's also a great reinforcement tool when you're making players work too hard on the court which could hit their energy and stamina level so if you're holding the sprint button the whole time your controller is going to let you know you had to chill out man that was a lot but because this is the 2k community that's never where things end if you've been alive and on twitter over the last couple days you've been in the loop but if you haven't my goodness. So Chalk was the first legend in NBA 2K20. He was, he's been a relevant player in the 2K community for a while now. He was a top pro-am player back in the day. Right now he's a professional NBA 2K league player. So he's definitely an incredible player at the game. No debate about that. But over the years, he's found himself in like infinite situations where I don't see nobody else in personally. When there was a VC glitch, he put out a troll tweet uh, snitching and the whole community got mad at him for that. A few months ago, him and Grinding got in some drama where he accused grinding of uh, I don't remember what happened. I should know, but hey, I, I'll, I'll talk to Beamstar. A few months ago, he pointed the finger at Joe Nose saying Joe Nose was view botting, even though there was no evidence of that. Then Grindin pointed the finger at Chalk with a lot of evidence that he was view botting. It was either a very unfortunate YouTube glitch or Chalk was view botting, but that blew over. And now he seems to be in another drama because T Jack is accusing Chalk 
of using a modded controller in wagers against content creators for money. So let me break down how this situation devolved. T-Jack put out a tweet saying, I didn't think Chalk can make himself look any worse until I saw this dude bragging about being good at the game, but yet he's using a modded controller literally on stream. T-Jack decided to release this tweet as a follow-up saying, last time I'm ever speaking about this ever again, I'm mad because this kid is a professional 2K player influencing others to literally cheat. He played a wager versus other creators and took money from them by cheating. And this is what T-Jack said in the video. All right, guys, so Chalk claims that he's not using a modded controller because he's using Square to use his butt. But what y'all don't know is, is he used to use it. He used to have the normal, you know, right stick, but then he got the script. If y'all don't know what the script is, well, just take a look at this. Before Chalk decided to buy his script, he decided to, you know, play some comp stage. And uh, I want you guys just to look at this clip right here. Uh, why, is, uh, aim, why, why is Chalk, why is Chalk using the right stick in this gameplay? Why does it say center, but also, why does his fucking bar not move in this game? His bar does not move. Hold on. It looked like Let's look at this. Why does his bar not move? When you got to aim, bro. Look. So, Chalk, what is your explanation for this? What were you doing? Were you just randomly decided to use... Oh, I'm going to decide to use the right stick this time? Was that... Yeah, was this your excuse this time, bro? Bro, you got caught. You're using a modded controller. Just stop yeah. lying to people. So, t -Jack seems to have caught uh, Chalk in a lie. And you know what I'm saying? I don't like to jump to conclusions based on little evidence, especially before I hear the other side of the story. So I'm sitting here waiting for Chalk to say something about the situation. And he did. So Chalk tweeted saying, this is going to be my last time addressing any of this. Love the Fade King, which I'm pretty sure is, is Ticino, but whatever. We'll go with it. Look, y'all, it's crazy that I got to do this. It's crazy to do my controller. This is live. Okay? It's going to be edited a little bit because Twitter only allows two minutes and 20 seconds. But I'm going to go ahead and show you that I can miss, all right? With a perfect release controller, when you press a certain button, like you're gonna green it every time. What these dudes do when they shoot center, they press LB, they center it, they green it every time. I'm gonna show you that I can miss with X and green with X, watch. I'm gonna miss my first two shots. Pay close attention, all right? I'm gonna miss the first two shots, okay? You see, early, I missed the first one, right? I'm gonna miss again, I'm gonna miss again, watch. I'm gonna miss again. I missed again, early, right? Back to back early, for the rest of the game, I'm not missing. Now, how is that? Now, now, you guys just watched two straight misses, right? So how is it that out of nowhere, I just green the third one? Watch, I'm not missing no more. So Chalk is trying to prove that he's capable of missing using the system that um, that T-Jack was referencing in the past. And But in this instance, there's no uh, shot feedback. At least if there is, it's being blocked by his name up here. Because in the original clip T-Jack was referencing, uh, we didn't even see the bar move. The bar just jumped to green. And on top of that, you can see on the shot feedback, it says center, which means he was using the stick. And if Chalk stopped using the stick and he was using square, it wouldn't say center because you're not using the stick. So I kind of Waited because I was like, I'm gonna let this play out because I'm not sure right now. First of all, it wouldn't make sense for T-Jack to randomly take shots at Chalk. I don't think they had any problems in the past, but T-Jack seems to be doing this because Chalk, he believes Chalk was doing this in wagers to win money, which is fraud. That's a scam. So T-Jack responded saying, nobody ever said you couldn't miss a shot with the modded controller. I literally witnessed you not missing the timing one time for over an hour on stream with the meter. Just stop the cat, bro. Anybody with common sense can just peep in Bandit's past streams. One of the people that it seems uh, Chalk played a wager against replied to T-Jack saying, dude, I want my money back. T-Jack says he literally scammed you, bro. He should be canceled for this. But then things get even juicier because for some reason I thought that's where it was going to die down. But more people got involved as the clip started circulating around Twitter. This is Ticino now quote tweeting T-Jack's video. And this is what he had to say. That's near undeniable proof of him having a modded controller. But Chalk is a manipulator and will say whatever BS he can to make people believe what he wants. Dude finessed thousands of kids into joining his AE brand to promote himself and lie out his ass when grinding went at him. He followed up saying, for those who don't understand what the clip is showing, the point is this. It's literally straight down, no human adjustments equals a modded controller. And he references a chat here with a guy called Splies. When you use a shot stick like that, there's always a sway for human error. I used a shot stick for five straight days. Not once did I ever shoot a shot where I didn't have to readjust it at all. It's impossible to do it. So unless Chalk is so inhuman in his ability to play 2K that it almost seems robotic, the evidence is pointing to the fact that he did use a modded controller. Now it's true that Chalk has been a great player at 2K for a very long time now. At least since 2K16, I've known about him in the Pro-Am circuits. Now he's a professional player. So there's no doubt about him being a great player. But there's other great players out there saying it's near impossible for this 
this to be the case. But then Chop got on stream, and of course the chat's gonna criticize him about all the drama that's been going on on Twitter, and he had a lot of things to say. Then to come at me, let's talk, let, let's talk about T-Jack. You wanna know the reason why I never came at fucking T-Jack when he originally said anything? Because why in the blue f would I ever give somebody a time of day, right? Why would I ever give somebody a time of day who can't break 10K views? What the would I ever respond to this irrelevant piece of that I would beat the fucking brakes off of? Why wouldn't I respond to shit? Why the fuck would I respond to this irrelevant ass? So proceeding to call him not only irrelevant, but saying he would beat the brakes off of him. He says on Twitter, I made the decision in 2K21 I keep to myself. I legit isolated myself from the community and no matter what, I'm always being dragged into new drama. I can't go a single day without someone trying to ruin my credibility or tear down everything I've grinded for. I stayed out of the rep race because I didn't want to be accused all year of cheating. I stayed on Xbox because I didn't want to associate with any YouTubers or anyone in the community. My goal was to stay in my lane, only my lane, and every single day something new. The last time I'll ever speak on this, I don't use a modded controller. I never have and I never will. I play this game professionally and I've always been good at the game. I don't need to boost. This is the second time in a dry period of the game dudes begin to slander my name just because of the likes and views uh, you get doing so. I'm not asking for special privileges. If I'm causing problems, check me. But at the end of the day, I'm still human, bro. Just let me be one. I understand what Ticino's saying with the manipulation thing because he just positioned himself as a victim in all of this. And if he is truly innocent, which is highly likely he's not based on the evidence out there, but then he follows up in that last tweet saying, he, he said, if I'm causing problems, check me. That's what just happened. Someone believed that you were using a modded controller and gave evidence of you doing that. So that's you being checked by T-Jack. So you don't, it doesn't seem like you want people to check you because you just hopped on stream and call him irrelevant and said you'd beat the brakes off of him. Ticino put out a tweet saying, I hope you're good, Chalk, but we only get in at you to keep the community straight. Talking honestly about everything, owning up to the mistakes instead of portraying yourself as a victim is the way to do it. And please don't compare view counts, my guy. Stay safe, DMs open. Rage responded saying, nah, that. So as the hostility was building up, and this person reacts and this person says some other stuff and there's evidence here and this person responds here. Chalk hops on stream again where almost the unthinkable happens. A human being, bro. And this shit, you can't even be a human being, in shit, bro. Every fucking day. Every fucking day. It's a new every day, bro. And y'all is so fucking stupid that you don't see it, man. You don't see how targeted it is, bro. You don't see it man you don't see that these dudes sit in the f group chat and fucking pawn on me every f day that was on stream i don't i don't think we've ever had anything like this happen in 2k community and yo i've been in this community for seven years now I've never seen anything like we saw in the last couple days on Twitter. Chalk put out a tweet later saying, don't ever mistake tears of frustration with weakness. When you put your all into something, it's hard not to be passionate, especially when people are constantly making false claims and accusations about you. It's been like this for over a year and today I showed I'm human. Mitchell, uh, influencer marketing for 2K, <laughs> he put out a tweet saying, you all need to stop treating each other like seriously. And so the kind of tide began to shift after that clip kind of blew up. People were like, oh, I'm lagging, got in, it ain't serious. But for Chalk, it was that serious. If Chalk feels like he's being targeted by everybody. Now granted, it kind of feel like he be putting himself in the situation from time to time. I do feel for the guy. But at the same time, man, I just saw him try and point a finger at Joe Nose doing the same thing with zero evidence. So when there's actual evidence and someone points the finger at you, then what are we talking about? Joe Knowles just had a great month on YouTube and you put out, actually you didn't, you just texted someone privately. So I guess that's a little different. But in your tweet, you said you wanted people to check you. But every time somebody checks you about something, whether it was the view botting thing in the past or the modded controller thing that's going on right now, or the tweet you put out when you snitched about the VC glitch, you immediately get to making yourself the victim. But at the same time, I don't know what other people are dealing with. So me personally, I don't like to go too hard on people. I present the facts and I let it be. Bandit put out a tweet saying, yo, chill on Chalk, man, before he ends up hurting himself. Just leave bro alone, for real. That was bad, praying for Chalk. Hope he gets the help he needs. T-Jack responded saying, Chalk said he'll beat the brakes off of me. I'm in Tampa too. Oh, do they live in the same area? <laughs> First of all, guys, I'm always an advocate for more content. 
I'm saying a perfect way to resolve this would be to get to the bottom of it, but the most entertaining way to resolve it would be a boxing match. I'm just saying. <laughs> Duke quote tweeted and said, man, you grown, shut your ass up. <laughs> me personally, I'm conflicted. Cause while the human parts of me wants to feel sympathy for him, I know Chalk does a great job of making himself feel like and position himself like the victim here. The victims, if we're being clear, are the people you wager. Now, it's difficult because there's evidence. Man, there's an overwhelming amount of people that believe that based on the videos that we've seen that you use the modded controller. And if you did that in a wager, then those would be the victims. So that's kind of the situation in a nutshell. Who knows where it goes from here? I doubt it's gonna continue to evolve. It sounds like it's uh, going to devolve before everybody forgets about it because that's how the internet works in two months. All right, so I'm glad I waited. There's now an update to the chalk scenario right when I thought it was gonna die down because chalk uploaded his own video saying, I am a cheater, NBA 2K21, responding to all of the allegations people are making. This is why I like to wait to see what both sides say. And Chalk, you shouldn't have, this should have been the first thing you said, I'm telling you. Cause that initial video just made it look like you purposefully misunderstood the allegation because you had no defense. But in this video, let me break down and summarize this Chalk video for you. He didn't shy away from the allegations. He looked to address every single one people were making online. Let's start with the one that he was using a modded controller. I mean, this is literally the exact same gameplay, bro. And we're talking about, I have a modded controller in a stage game with people I don't know. It's not like there's eyes on this or this is being streamed. So why would I not just green that one? I literally just airballed. And so Chalk is saying that the initial clip that people are using as evidence was taken out of context uh, because if you continued watching the rest of the game, his follow up shot was an air ball. Now I've actually talked to people that used modded controllers before and I've been told that it's possible to miss on these modded controllers. Just because somebody missed doesn't mean that they're not using one. That being said, Chalk brings up a good point. This game was not being televised. It was not like a big game. There would be no reason for him to use a modded controller in this game. But at the same time, this still doesn't explain the initial clip. So then Chalk pulled up the game that, uh, the wager that he was in with other content creators uh, where he was accused of defrauding and taking the money from other people while he was on a modded controller. Uh, and this is what he had to say about that game. Er, you're wrong. I miss yet again. Now, why is that? I have a perfect release controller. I should never miss wide open. Here's another possession. I'm dribbling the ball. I'm working to get open. Can't really get open. I'm going to keep working. I hit him with the Dexter. I finally get open. And I mean, I just literally murder solo right there. That's a wide open three in the corner. Like, that's money ball. 2% contested. Play better defense. Now, keep in mind, I have a modded controller, supposedly these guys don't, yet the score is 12 to 12. And to be honest with you, these are not competitive players. So it's weird that with a modded controller, I can miss shots that I'm missing, like I don't understand. Then he addressed the third thing, and this actually I didn't bring up in the original video, but people asked Chalk why he was using a wired controller. Chalk played the game wirelessly. And Chalk brought up in the video, he said that there's more delay when you play wirelessly. I don't play on Xbox, so y'all gonna have to tell me how bad of a difference it is. But on PlayStation, there's actually a setting you can change if you want to very also slightly reduce the latency by plugging it, plugging in the controller and playing wired. But the difference was so negligible, it wasn't worth me personally playing wired. Xbox players, you have to be the judge of that. But if Chalk is saying that he plays wired so that he has to shoot a certain type of way there's less latency and that's the way he's used to playing, then that sounds reasonable. That being said, Chuck is either lying right now or the most unfortunate person on the planet. I'm telling you it's one of the two because it makes no sense over the last year how so many pieces of evidence can point to one direction and you can't be the person doing these things. That being said, uh, I'm, I think this is the only thing you should have said, Chuck. I'm not gonna lie to you. That original video you posted and the tweets you posted it may, it may everyone that's not gonna watch this video certain that you cheated. But even in the original allegations, outside of what T-Jack is saying, even in Ticino's quote tweets, Ticino's saying it's nearly impossible for that to be done. He never used definitive terms like, it is impossible. Because there's always room for error. When I was on this drama alert and uh, there was evidence pointing to the fact that Chalk View bought it, I'm like, hold on now, we've seen YouTube view glitches before. Does it look bad and does it likely that Chalk View bought it? Yes. But you have to wait to hear his side of the story and it could just be a glitch. 
So, um, that's how this story, it looks like, is gonna end. I wonder how it's gonna evolve from here. Uh, the people that have modded controllers are gonna be the ones who can pick apart whether or not he was telling the truth about a lot of the stuff he said in this video. I'll link it down below if you wanna watch the full thing and you can be the judge of that. Um, but hey man, that's that story. But the news did not end there because PlayStation, uh, like four or five days ago, released their new terms of service and update where they were letting everybody know that they're spying on you now. They ain't say it like that, but that's how everybody interpreted it. And people were not happy about that news. Me personally, I prefer Discord by every imaginable metric. I use a PlayStation Party from time to time because it's easier, especially when you're recording videos. But in an effort to get the whole news cycle to stop talking about the spying that's going on with PlayStation, PlayStation decided to drop information on their new UI, their user interface. And it looks like this. Man, first of all, I love this. This looks incredible. So PlayStation dropped an entire 11 minute video showing the startup screen, the user interface for the new PlayStation 5. And if we just scroll through this, there's no doubt about it. It looks dope. I dropped a video on my second channel talking about console wars and how pointless they were. I'm gonna leave a link to the description and an end screen if you guys missed it. I've been doing this game and stuff for a while, so I didn't really need to see this to know that PlayStation was gonna have a better UI. This gets me excited. I, I used to love playing Little Big Planet. So, whoo! Is this a 4K? Oh my God, the quality looks great right now on my screen. And they proceed to show the UI. There's, there's videos playing on the top right. Everything looks beautiful and ooh, easy to get to. Yo, I'm a PC player at heart now. So the only thing that get me to play consoles is just like a good UI and a simple gaming experience. And it seems like PlayStation delivered. I'm gonna leave the link to this entire thing if you guys wanna go through and see what everything looks like. But if we just pause right here, it looked fire. Uh, but Xbox, the competition was like, hey, we can't have Sony with all the spotlight today. <laughs> so they decided to release a tweet dropping their user interface. They say the new Xbox UX, which I think they, they could just say UI. They had to say UX. It's fast, sleek, stylish, and works great on the Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S, rolling out to an Xbox near you. I'll say this, whatever PlayStation update that just went down made friend list impossible for me to get to. It takes like minutes, like five, six minutes for my friends list to load up now, by the way. And the, the whole console feels way laggier, which is basically what Tim Cook does with the iPhones, right? Where they slow down your iPhone so you buy the new ones. I'm pretty sure that's what Sony just did. You should be relieved if you're a person who plays on the Xbox and they told you that the UI update is also gonna be for the current gen version of the Xbox. Wait, what current gen version of the Xbox? The current Xbox, that was wrong with me. Uh, but they show off the user interface here, and I as I said in that second channel video, Microsoft loves their little boxy Windows-like designs. And while they looked cool way back in the day, I'm, I'm just over them now, you know what I'm saying? I'm over them, personally. It looks good, I'm not saying it doesn't look good, but it doesn't look PlayStation good. It looks a lot like the current Xbox user interface. Uh, but with a whole lot of quality of life improvements. I'll leave a link to this too if you want to go through an entire article. Hey, Sony, shout out Sony. So 2K and Microsoft just don't get it because they just keep releasing text to explain news to us. It's the least exciting way to release news. But PlayStation released a video. They know we watch videos. I love that. That's dope. I guess the Xbox is really going with like the Windows integration. So that's where you're gonna see a lot of similarities and they do that here with, mm, you see Windows and then mm, you see Xbox, Xbox, Windows, Xbox. See, that's, that's the thing about Microsoft. They always try and do this like media device thing. This is a gaming device for me personally. I don't need that media stuff on there. Oh, Xbox dropped a video too. I lied, I lied. So it was just 2K that doesn't get it. Correction, and they dropped a 41 minute video. Is this like a press conference or something? Ah, never, never mind, never mind. Put them back in the bank with 2K. Hey, uh, so that's all the news that went down and it was a lot of it. There's plenty to be excited about and I, this is the first time for me since pre-ordering the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox that I genuinely feel excited. I feel excited to play 2K. I feel excited for the user interfaces. I feel excited for less load times. I feel excited for just a better overall experience because man, I hate that current gen experience. Especially coming from PC, it just feels slow and outdated. 1080p? 30 frames in some of these games, ugh. Uh, so that's it, fellas. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like. Subscribe to the channel. And I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Oh, console video here. The console war video I was referring to, it's right here. Click that. Catch you guys in the next one.